I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't been doing well lately. I've been stressed out, struggling to manage my depression, and it's been hard to focus on anything besides how crappy I feel. Then a friend asked me if I'd play this new indie game, and I said no. I couldn't even really parse his message because he was talking about raccoons and holes and weird shit, but I decided to look it up anyway, and I am glad I did because it was such a lovely experience, and I felt like after playing it, I was feeling a bit better. I find that there is no greater way to quell depression than stuff a bunch of shit into a hole. I'm going to refrain from making jokes about holes and putting things in them, so go ahead, get your snorts and giggles out of your system. You good? Okay, let's talk about Donut County. This is a game developed by Ben Esposito. I'm not exactly sure what genre to put it in. It's as relaxing as something like a hidden object game, but it has depth and quirkiness like Katamari Damashi. It's casual, experimental, and weird. That's how I describe it. The game was in development for several years and initially had a much different premise. It was named Kachina and centered around the Hopi tribe, but it was changed pretty drastically after Esposito realized it wasn't a story he was equipped to tell. And quite frankly, I'm glad he changed it because the story he did end up with is wonderful. You start out instant messaging with a raccoon, as you do. His name is BK, an impish trash panda who works at a donut delivery place with a girl named Mira. We cut to a scene that shows BK, Mira, and a lot of other characters living deep inside the earth, and through dialogue and gameplay we come to understand how all the characters got down there. So you get a hole, you see, and you move that hole around and you let objects fall into the hole, and every time you swallow a new item the hole expands, and then you can swallow bigger items, corn, Boston Terriers, rocks, snacks, entire buildings, it all goes into your hole. It's really hard not to sound dirty when describing this game. This is such a wacky, cute, and bizarre experience while also managing to be a great stress reliever. The humor does a great job of keeping things really funny. <laughs> I cannot believe I just wrote this sentence into my script. I swear this is the influence of the game. Yes, Roses, the humor keeps things funny. Good job. The gameplay itself is just interactive enough to keep you busy, but not overstimulated. And it's hard to find games that can offer that. Usually it's difficult to find a combination that keeps you interested and relaxed at the same time. It also manages to have a message that becomes apparent as you advance. I wasn't expecting it from a game like this, as you start out haphazardly trying to get a goose on a Vespa to drop into a hole, so I was pleasantly surprised that it had a little more depth. The dialogue is the game's strongest point. It consists of these really terse, amusing sentences that allows the story to keep rolling at a nice pace. It's written as though you are constantly in an AIM conversation, RIP AIM, and it's the kind of conversation that I'd normally hate. I know I'm going to sound like a crotchety old fart, but I've always hated internet jargon like LOL or LMFAO. You'd think I wouldn't mind, as I grew up when AOL was at its peak and I was constantly in chat rooms and IMing people, but nope. I try not to judge, but it sends me into some kind of weird elitist headspace. I just think, ew, why don't they use action marks like me? We should all type like we're role-playing. I'm sorry, I'm a terrible judgmental person, I can't help it. However, it somehow fits the tone of this game in a pretty perfect way, and I can grasp the characters' personalities quite well because of it, even when they're saying LOL in their dialogue bubbles. I also love that every item in the Trashopedia has a description. I haven't been this impressed with inventory descriptions since Callahan's Cross Time Saloon, where you could look at everything and always get an amusing response. The humor style for these items reminds me of something You Suck at Cooking would write, and I would say if you like those videos, you would probably like this game. I was also fairly impressed by the physics. When I opened up Donut County, I was fully expecting some of the items to bug out or get stuck in the hole, because any other game I've played with mechanics like this have had some issues. I was surprised at how easily the game controlled and how realistically things wobbled around. Nothing got stuck, at least not in my game, and I've never felt so satisfied with just allowing things to fall. It also provides different ways to solve puzzles as you go through each level. They're not difficult, but it does cut up the monotony. The settings are very cute. I don't think that's the game's strongest aspect, but they are very pleasant to look at, and I think the characters are just adorable. And the music... It's fitting. If I may be candid, I found it slightly annoying when I first heard some of the tracks, but it actually grew on me the more I played and the more I understood the mood the game was going for. Once you accept Donut County's zaniness, it all fits together. However, it's not a long game and some people may not like that. I find myself craving more from a game if I feel like it was a short experience or if it didn't conclude things well, but I feel like I got just the right amount of gameplay. It took me about two hours to get through, though by the end it genuinely felt like I spent a lot 
lot more time with it. Had it gone for much longer, I don't think I would have enjoyed it as much, and since it was such a great experience and improved my mood for a short time, I can definitely say I did not regret buying it at its $13 price point. I typically purchase games for the experience, and I'd rather have something short and entertaining than long and boring as fuck, but it all depends on personal taste. Not everyone is going to feel like this is worth their money. The price of this game does not change my opinion on it. Donut County is refreshing, amusing, and a decent stress reliever, so for those things it has my recommendation. Plus, it has crows, and they are very cute. So go, go stuff things into your hole and be a happier person. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this very quick review of Donut County. I truly hope you'll check it out. If you want to support my channel, consider pledging to my Patreon campaign. If you want to talk to me about crows, then check out my social media pages, where I am in fact very social. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next one.